why is it that as Christians, when we sin against God, we have this mindset that God has changed his password and so we're going to have the response of access denied? Yes, most Christians sin against God and then they stay away from prayer meetings, they stay away from fellowship. Personally, they do not pray and they shy away from things of the Lord because they believe that God is angry with them and they don't have access to God. Today, we're going to be talking about assessing God's presence and I'm going to answer this question. I'm making a comparison between the way we, they assessed God in the Old Testament and the way we assess God now in the New Testament. Leviticus chapter 16 and Hebrews chapter 9 talks about the high priest going into the most holy place once every year. That is how they assess God. Whenever you sin against God, you go and make atonement. You go and talk to the priest. You go and talk to the high priest. And it's only the high priest that would have access into the most holy place to make atonement for the sin of the people once every year. But now in the New Testament, the Bible tells us in Mark chapter 15 that when Jesus Christ died, that the veil in the, in the temple, that it tore, that grants us access now into God's presence. We do not need a high priest because Jesus Christ is now our high priest who has already gone to pay the price once and for all. So we do not now need another high priest, a physical high priest, to go before God to make atonement for us. We now have access into the most holy place. We now have access into the presence of God. We now have access to talk to God one on one. And so Ephesians chapter 3 verse 12 talks about freedom and confidence in assessing God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 18 talks about assessing the Father by one spirit. And Hebrews chapter 10 verse 21 also told us that we have access into the presence of God through Jesus Christ. The emphasis now is through Jesus Christ. Now Hebrews chapter um, 4 verse 16, it says let us approach the throne of God with confidence, with boldness that we may obtain mercy. Now I want to analyze that scripture. The Bible says approach the throne of God with boldness that you would obtain mercy. Who needs mercy? One of the things that mercy does for us is that it forgives. Okay, We need God's mercy when we have sinned against God. But then the Bible says come boldly. You have sinned against God. You are coming to obtain mercy. And then he said, come boldly. That means you should not shy away from his presence. You should not stay away because you have sinned. You should not come with timidity. You should not come with, with fear or want to stay away from his presence because you have sinned. He said, when you have sinned, come boldly before my presence that you may obtain mercy. I will this mercy. You would obtain mercy and grace. The Bible says that the grace of God has appeared to all men to teach us to say no to every form of ungodliness in titles. So that mercy you will receive will forgive mercy because of your sins and then you receive grace that would help you not to fall back to that sin. So as a Christian, we have access to God because we're in Jesus Christ. So we have direct access to God. So when we sin against God, we shouldn't stay away from God's presence. We shouldn't stay away from fellowship. Rather, at that moment, at that moment, when you are recognized you have sinned, just yield yourself to God. Open your mouth and say, God, I am sorry. Please forgive me. Come boldly before the throne of God. So one, I want us to know that through Jesus Christ, we have access to God. So maybe you've been praying. Maybe you've been, you have this, you out there listening to me, you have this problem that you've been asking God for. The first question I want to ask you is, are you in Jesus Christ? Then only assess the Father through Jesus Christ. Have you accepted him as your Lord and personal Savior? And then the second point is, if you have, then come before the throne of God with boldness. Even when you have sinned against God, come with boldness and ask God to forgive you. You know, it's the devil that tries to keep us in that state of sin because he wants us to totally fall and then he will destroy us and he will have our soul in hellfire. But Bible says that Jesus Christ came that we would have life. So we assess the throne of God, we ask him for mercy and we are restored back to our righteous state in Christ Jesus Christ. So I want to... Um, I want to plead with us, please. Don't remain in your lost state when you sin against God. We have access to God. We have access to God. You don't need a pastor to talk to God for you. You don't need him to talk to God for you. We respect spiritual authority. We know that people have different levels of grace. Sometimes we receive grace, we can ask them to pray for us, yes. But then don't forget that you yourself have access into God's presence. You, as a Christian, you have access to God's presence. So I'm going to pray for you. And I ask, dear Lord, I help us understand that as Christians we have access to you, direct access. Like we don't need someone else to be an intermediary, just Jesus Christ. Because we believe in Jesus Christ, we have access directly to the Father. So we ask so God that you grant us understanding. The devil will not keep us with guilt, with, with fear, or make us stay away from moments and against you, but give us the boldness to assess your presence, to come into your presence with boldness in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And to everyone out there listening to me that is yet to give your lives to Christ, that is yet to be in Jesus Christ, that is yet to come to the knowledge of Jesus. I ask so God that the convicting power of the Lord we keep stirring their hearts till they yield to you, O God. We break every yoke of the enemy, every form of darkness in their heart. We ask, O God, that your light will shine and bring them to the knowledge of Christ in the name of Jesus. Amen.
happening. Thank you very much for joining me today. Tomorrow we'll be looking at the protocol of assessing God's presence. There is a protocol, yes. There is a path. There is a way to assess God's presence. So tomorrow we're going to be looking at the protocol. Um, yes, the protocol of assessing God's presence. And so meet me again by 3 p.m. And we'll finish it. Thank you very much and I love you all.